What's going on guys, Sage here back again with another video, and in today's video we're going to be switching things up a bit. Instead of doing the long form content that's highly scripted and edited, I think you guys would much rather enjoy like a little bit of a yap session we'll say, and in today's little yap session we'll be talking about Goku vs. Gohan, more specifically Super Saiyan 3 Goku vs. Ultimate Gohan from the Boo arc. I know everyone and their mother has probably talked about this topic at this point, but for some reason no one can seem to agree on it to this day, and the argument has just got sparked more than ever due to Dragon Ball Daima's confirmation that Goku is the strongest fighter in the series. To start off with the first and main reason why Gohan should exceed Super Saiyan 3 Goku, it's pretty much just you know reiterated to us over and over again that uh, Ultimate Gohan was stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Boo Tanks. Well, not Boo Tanks, Go Tanks, my bad. Um, which is said right here, you know, a tiny bit stronger. And then I don't, I, th I think this is from the Daizenshu. It's just stated as of Volume 41 that he's the mightiest warrior in the series, which would include the suppressed Super Saiyan 3 Goku that fought Fat Boo. But we'll get into that more later on. As for some supporting evidence that Super Saiyan 3 Goku, or just Gotenks in general, is stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, here's Goku's first own admission of the fucking, uh, like, him admitting that Gotenks is stronger than him first off when he, when he said that to Fat Boo. You could argue that, you know, he was just trying to hype up Gotenks for Boo, but I'm pretty sure this is just Toriyama speaking through Goku saying that the boys are going to be as strong as him or stronger than him. Piccolo pretty much confirms this when they're fighting Super Boo. Uh, he's never fought anyone as strong as you. It unsettles him to think someone might be equal. Uh, a lot of people might think this is like this might not include Fat Boo, but we know for a fact that Super Boo has Fat Boo's memories. He like literally spares Hercule for this reason. So all of Fat Boo's enemies are Super Boo's enemies, and Piccolo, who has also sent Super Saiyan 3 Goku, quite literally just says Gotenks is stronger and equal to Super Boo. Some more evidence for this is Super Saiyan 1 Gotenks blatantly beating up on Super Boo and blowing him the fuck up. Um, this Super Boo is way stronger than Fat Boo. Now, I don't know about way stronger, but Piccolo literally makes a distinction between the two and uh, is literally sweating at the thought of fighting Super Boo, even though he's already sensed Fat Boo, making it clear that Super Boo is more of a threat. Super Saiyan 3 Goku is more, you know, relative to Fat Boo, even if you think he's suppressed and stalling for time, which he is. Um, but... Him saying that he could have beat Fat Boo doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, he's not relative to him and would have just washed him in a fight. We quite literally see that Fat Boo can tank hits from him while probably playing around and that the two are just, you know, displayed and portrayed to be relative to one another. More evidence for this is that Super Saiyan 1 Gotenks are arguably even base Gotenks is stated to be stronger than Vegeta. Um, this would most likely be Super Saiyan, Vegeta, Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta that they're talking about, obviously, since it would be the strongest form of Vegeta. Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta is stated verbatim to be near equal to Super Saiyan 2 Goku, so that would just by default mean that Super Saiyan 1 Gotenks is just two times stronger than Super Saiyan 2 Goku, and when they both assume their Super Saiyan 3 multiplier, uh, Gotenks should obviously just outscale. More evidence for Gotenks, not Gotenks and Gohan being above Goku, obviously, is uh, Goku's visible shock and sweating at Ultimate Gohan's power release, which... I, you could chalk up to just, you know, him being shocked at his son being so powerful, but considering the narrative of, you know, Goten, well, not Goten, but Gotenks and the next generation surpassing Goku, uh, this moment, in my opinion, is obviously meant to represent 
uh, the passing of the torch and Gohan surpassing Goku, or there would be, like, no reason for this shock. And I know I keep saying this, but, you know, even further evidence for this is uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku basically just cucking down to Gohan or, you know, treating him as if he's the go-to guy, like he's the protector of Earth, obviously. And while this on its own shouldn't be used to prove, you know, Super Saiyan 3 Goku below Ultimate Gohan, is it can be at least used as supporting evidence or he would have just attacked Boo himself if he was stronger, in my opinion. Uh, people will say that uh, he inter he didn't want to interrupt Gohan's one-on-one -on -one fight, but considering like the the threat that Super Boo posed at this point, I don't think that's too much of like I think Go I think that Goku would be willing to jump in to save the Earth. Even more evidence, guys. Yeah, take a shot for every time I say that. But even more evidence is obviously Goku saying that if him and Vegeta leave Super Buu's body after extracting the boys, that uh, they would he, he would be strong enough to kill them. This is, you know, while he's with Vegeta, so it's both of them uh, pretty much proving that they're both, like, a good bit below Super Buu, even with Goku Super Saiyan 3. A lot of people will try to say that um, this is either, contra well, not contradicted, but this is only in reference to the fact that they're small, which isn't provable. Um, we don't know one way or the other if Goku was thinking they were going to be the same size when they exited Boo's body, and there's also no statement that lets us know them being small affects their power in any way. So that's pretty much a non-argument. And then the other argument for why this means nothing is that Goku would later go on to fight Kid Buu, who outscales all the Boos, but that's wrong as well, and we'll get into that a little later on. And by later on, guys, I mean right now, since it should be more than obvious that Kid Buu isn't the strongest Buu, especially when we see that he's on par with Super Saiyan 3 Goku, who had already emitted inferiority to Buu Han before. This is also backed up when you consider the fact that base Vegito who was said to be as strong as Super Saiyan 3, Goku needed Super Saiyan to deal with Buhan. This would basically just mean that if Goku was already on this level, he would have no reason to fuse, yet he's on par with Kid Buu, making it, like, again, pretty obvious that Kid Buu isn't on the level of Buhan. Final bit of supporting evidence for this scaling is when Goku, at, when asking Vegeta what his plan is to beat Buu, uh, he thinks that go that it's just to go get Gohan and Gotenks, showing that they're at least on par with Super Saiyan 3, or Goku would have no reason to think of them. To debunk some bad arguments for Goku being the strongest real quick though, we have the most obvious one with people saying because uh, Kid Buu is the most dangerous that he's the most powerful. Obviously, most dangerous and most powerful aren't mutually inclusive, so this statement can just be interpreted basically any fucking way you want to. It means nothing. The main misconception that I want to debunk, though, is that Goku supposedly needed the combined power of everybody on Earth to beat Kid Buu, which would automatically make Kid Buu the strongest enemy. Um, this is a lie for multiple reasons. First off, just because people are contributing their energy to the Genki Dama doesn't mean that they're taking all of their ki and putting it into here and adding it to Goku's power. Genki is pretty often told to be a completely, not a completely different power, but a separate power from ki, as it's one of the fundamentals of ki, but it's not the main thing that people use for attacks. It's mostly life energy. Um, from the ocean living things, the planet, etc. It's it's like more like natural energy from Naruto. And it get where's the statement at? Um, uh, mm -mm. And then it's converted into attack energy. It's not exactly attack energy. Like Goku takes the energy from people and living things and converts it into destructive energy. It's not inherently destructive energy, um, which should be more than obvious already, considering the fact that 
when Earth gives their energy to Goku, that the spirit bomb gets much bigger, as opposed to when um, Piccolo, Goten, and Gohan give their power. It's small, even though these people far, even though Piccolo, Gohan, Goten, and Trunks obviously outclass the normal humans by billions of times, if not trillions of times, their energy is somehow enough to power the spirit bomb completely. Pretty much just showing anyone who has a brain that Genki is not the same as regular energy. Another really stupid argument that I saw online is this uh, hypothetical full power Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Um, here he says he needs a minute to grow in power. Uh... It's a power, like it's a power level. He's pretty confident he can reach um, to be stronger than Boo, which I don't think is too outlandish considering he said that he could kill like Fat Boo. So him being able to power up to a level that he probably reached in the afterlife to be above Boo isn't that outlandish. But what my big problem is is that people will use this to say that he's massively above Super Saiyan, not Super Saiyan, but Ultimate Gohan which just would make no sense narratively, first of all, and power scaling wise, but also because it's just blatant headcanon. Like, there's no way around it. Just because Goku is confident in reaching a level of power doesn't mean that he can automatically solo anyone just because you gave him a made-up power level. It just doesn't make sense given all the evidence I've already displayed. Some more shitty hyperbolic statements about... Uh, the Earth being doomed because of Kid Buu if, uh, if Vegeta and Goku didn't succeed. Him saying we would have been finished. Uh, obviously, these, do these statements don't mean that Kid Buu beats fucking Ultimate Gohan and Gotenks. Uh, they're just being used to hype up Buu's threat, obviously. Of hyperbolic statements, though, another way that Goku fans will try to get him above Gohan is bringing up scans like this that say he has the best key in the universe. Or the super exciting guide that says Majin Buu attained a power on par with Super Saiyan 3 Goku after absorbing Gohan. The first problem with these scans is obviously the power scaling inconsistency that I brought up before, which I'm not going to go over again. So I'll just go over the second and main problem, which is the fact that these are just not canon. But what do I mean by that? Well, my definition of canon is usually just going by what the manga says, which is why I haven't brought up anything about the anime or any guides really, other than stuff that has already been mentioned in the manga, which is supported by the guides. Um, as well as the fact that Toriyama literally just says that he has no inv like he had no involvement from where the where this information comes from, which in the case of the super exciting guide is, is just like a retread of anything of the Daisenshu which Toriyama, again, just says that he didn't work on and leaves to his staff. So, I just think that not only is it not canon, but even if you did consider it canon because Toriyama, I guess, fucking put his eyeballs on it, then it just wouldn't be consistent with the manga. Same thing with this V-Jump scan, except uh, it's even less credible because it's not for, like, the super exciting guide is just, again, a retread of the Daisenshu, whereas this is just a... Uh, some made up shit by some guy at Shueisha or whatever whatever company owns Dragon Ball. Toriyama obviously didn't write any of this shit, so there's no reason for me to take it seriously. Uh the last and I guess most credible statement is possibly this uh statement of Goku being the strong like his feelings being understood by his fellow strongest in Kid Buu. But uh, the main problem with this is, again, scaling and consistency, as I think Gohan and Gotenks obviously outscale him. And then on the end of uh, Kid Buu, uh, Buhan and Tanks obviously outscale him as well. So this statement really just makes no sense. And um, again, with the Daisenshu and any statement that Toriyama didn't write, I just take it with a grain of salt um, because Toriyama lacked any involvement with it. So... I would rather just go on what we've seen and been stated in the manga versus nitpicking little statements that say Goku is the strongest. Call me biased, but uh, I choose the manga as my source. Now, the last thing that I really want to talk about in this matchup, 
that seals the deal for Goku being weaker than Gohan, in my opinion, is the detrimental time drain that comes with Super Saiyan 3 or the, the time limit imposed on the form, which basically just makes Goku useless after like five minutes, um, meaning anyone relative to him like Kid Buu and Gohan, in my opinion, in strength would just watch would just wash him in a war of attrition. Um, the only way that I see, the only way that you could argue Goku wins is if you think he's massively above Gohan, which I don't even think he's on Gohan's level to begin with, let alone massively above him. But even if you lowball Gohan and say that he's about equal to Super Saiyan 3 Goku, again, Goku would just lose in a war of attrition. So th that's why people usually come with this cop out of, who's stronger, Gohan or Goku. They don't really go into who would win in a fight because obviously Gohan would win in a fight unless you're a brain-dead idiot who thinks that Goku just one-shots Gohan and blitzes him. Now, I know that I said the last thing I was going to talk about was the Super Saiyan 3 time limit, but the main reason I even made this video in the first place is because the most recent statement about Dragon Ball Daima Goku being the strongest in the series. And um, because people don't really know how long after uh, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Daima is, it's uh, it basically just reignited the whole conversation around if Gohan is stronger than Goku to begin with. And um, I recently talked to my friend about this. I have no problem with Goku and Dragon Ball Daima being the strongest. Mostly because we know that Gohan doesn't train in the first place and slacks off while Goku is literally training every day. And even though I think Gohan beats Goku, Super Saiyan 3 Goku in the Buu Saga, I think it's like there's a minimal difference between the two. And um, if you just go by pure math um, with the with the Gotenks statement, Gotenks is, in Super Saiyan is only like two times stronger than like Super Saiyan 2 Goku, making him only like two times stronger than uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku when they're both Super Saiyan 3s. So Gohan should only be like two to three times stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Go Goku in the Buu arc. So Goku and Dragon Ball Daima training and being able to surpass Gohan really doesn't like, it's not that hot of a take in my opinion. But yeah, Gohan still claps Goku.